Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number two of our official series, where we watched some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. The server and Discord links are in the description. I'll also include timestamps of the different tracks in the video. So feel free to jump around if there's any that catch your eye. We're going to be starting off today with you know classic clutch kickers here. Uh, Yas going the lead. I think this was probably... I want to say maybe like our fourth or fifth lap or something like that. So not exactly the beginning, but definitely more towards the start of our weekend shenanigans. Yasko giving a pretty good lead. And uh, this I wanted to add in. I think I probably added a little bit too much clutch kickers after reviewing some of this edits. But I wanted to add this in just to kind of show what proximity you might want to be thinking of especially when you're driving with uh someone you haven't really driven with before right the guy in front of me here fresh in the lead i actually have not <clears throat> ever drifted with him so i'm trying to keep a decent amount of proximity kind of understand what his lines look like how his reactions are uh to the lead and then slowly you know each lap if they're consistent and able to stay in the train you can kind of understand okay this is how they drive these lines you take you see right there a little bit heavy left foot brake not a big deal because of that proximity but if i was right on his door and wasn't expecting that you definitely see everyone behind me start bunching up so uh, I, I felt like that was a pretty good example of just a show kind of like a moderate follow and then also you know the more consistent and smooth you are the better people can follow you too right and i always kind of say we talk a lot about especially in drifting in a set of course uh, uh being a good train member and with drifting at least for me i think it's always important to make sure that you're a good chaser to the person behind you or in front of you excuse me but also a good lead for the people behind you right especially if you're in a mid position like we see now and also shout out to uh p3 aka p3z aka pez I kind of gave him a bad uh, look on our last video with UK Streets. He's a really good driver. Um, so I'm glad to see that I was able to capture some moments in here too. So here I have driven with both of them. I'm a little bit closer. I still think I'm a little bit more hesitant, but I've really been thinking about these different lines on clutch kickers more. I know I mentioned a little bit about what I'm looking for on this track, but uh, but yeah, I still don't have like a definitive answer. You can see there, I was a little bit too far in when Fresh did his transition there. I kind of had to hold my angle, which then caused the people behind me. I kind of felt that you saw on screen a little bit of a tap just to tell me, hey man, uh, you kind of made a mistake there, you know? Uh, now we're switching though, the CG Drift Valley V2. This was another one that was featured last weekend. Track still is growing on me for sure. I've been another track. I mean, honestly, every track I drive, I try to think of the lines, but this one, especially thinking of where can I fill these outside zones and not slow the train up. I actually had a, a, a lot of footage when I was looking back on me, just really just throwing a bunch of leads, almost like, I think like 30 minutes of it, but I thought it would be a little bit more entertaining. And especially to look at the, uh, the chase position, I feel like that's a little bit underseen maybe uh especially with with trains versus like just a straight up tandem so here we go and do a transition now we have otm reg and fresh in front of us again both of these drivers i've driven with so i have a pretty decent idea of how they're going to drive but i really haven't driven a lot with them on this track so i would say i'm being a little bit aggressive here as far as proximity but luckily i think both of those drivers are, are very consistent so there's not too much of an issue you can see here too one thing i just wanted to call out you see how i lost a lot of proximity there they took a really outside line and, and i was still uh really struggling to catch up but it took a little bit shallower of a line to hold my proximity with them and that helped me without having to lurch forward and really uh disrupt the people behind me right that's one thing that I think a lot of people should think about, especially in a train, but definitely in just a tandem, you know, sometimes you're going to cut. Obviously, you don't want to be too aggressive with those shallow cuts and go off track. But I think there's a, a healthy medium there where you can start pulling back a little bit 
of that proximity gap but uh still keep it smooth and consistent for everyone behind you too so I, I thought it was a pretty cool clip to showcase and here you can see it again yasko has a very wide line which is good it's actually a really good line but uh I i'm just losing the proximity for some reason i'm not quite sure so i took that shallow line yet again the train was able to stick stick with me and uh we were able to stay with yasko pretty close on proximity so honestly pretty good showcase clip so far uh not, not to toot my own horn but uh next track this track is sportsland yamanashi i don't remember if this was on our last weekend but it was interesting actually watching this back and uh i always feel like this track is so narrow there's really a lot of lines you have to consciously think about and uh a lot of tight corners so narrow track tight corners uh, almost a fast track in a way this part too trying to stick with them really late on the transition on my side but again you see me cutting a little bit more shallow to stay with them i still think it would be chaseable if there was someone on my door it's not like i was cutting it so it would be impossible to keep up with me right here i've tried using a little bit of left foot brake or e-brake there you can see i braked way too hard ended up really losing all the wheel speed that i have the s15 is such a grippy car you really need to ensure that that wheel speed stays up so you could see or, or probably even hear just that bog that happened because of that so same thing right here i think i'm actually doing a little bit better you can see i took a wider line because i was kind of anticipating that but look at that gap that that caused so here i'm cutting in a little bit tighter trying to make sure that that proximity doesn't get too out of hand but i'm kind of just playing a constant catch up um it could it could be a lot of things i mean it could just be a little bit of rough lines for me not matching in front of me things like that it's always hard to say it, it always depends a bit you know a lot of variation there but we are now back to another at least for me an og map shadow valley really thought this was cool uh i mean just look at that view right there like what is that one two three four five six cars big train this is really where I like to be. <laughs> like I said that last video, but it is always really fun to watch um, everyone else. And you could probably notice here, I'm giving a lot of proximity. I really do genuinely get nervous being a little bit too close, disrupting him who could disrupt the driver in front of him or me disrupting him, which disrupts me, which disrupts uh, people potentially behind me. I think right now we're kind of empty back there, but kind of wanted to just show that it you, you don't always need to be right on their door um i do i, I do like looking back on it though I, I think i could be a little bit more aggressive with my proximity and you can see like as the train you know each person might take a shallow line and then that might cause someone behind them to take a shallow line right there a little bit of a mistake up top but because i left that proximity i kind of refer to it as a cushion wasn't really affect anyone by maybe reducing my speed and their mistake didn't really affect anyone well wow, that's a lot of people looking at that track cam really big gap though yeah that's crazy and then here we have a lead from our good friend mods i think i wanted to showcase a little bit tighter of i don't know if i would consider this a train but uh you know a three four person tandem i wish i knew who was behind me but it does look like i think the four of us here have pretty good synergy i'm kind of giving mods a little bit of space this isn't a track i don't think i've driven a ton with him here i'm just trying to be really consistent especially right there where you see the two red arrows i always get really uh Honestly, I get a little bit nervous when that happens, so I try to give a little bit more proximity. But right there on that transition, I was feeling pretty confident, so stayed right on his door. Now we are moving over to Villain Sportsland. This honestly continues to become a very enjoyable track. I would almost argue this is what I think Clutch Kickers is a lot uh, to a lot of people right here trying to take 
an interesting angle because I wasn't sure what was happening. There was a little bit of a uh, disruption in front of me. And, and especially like, again, I, maybe I've harped on this a little bit too much in this video already, but I'm really just trying to have a little bit of a pocket, a little bit of a gap when I can, because I'm not sure a, a lot of these drivers, uh, I think we've all driven together somewhat, but uh, I don't think consistently. So we're not really sure what our strengths or weaknesses are. And especially, you know, the more people that you have, the more issues that can happen right so just giving a little bit of space it's, it i think sometimes it's looked at a little bit negatively but I, I think it's really helpful and here i thought this was cool to showcase i mean a massive train but you see those resets like that's something i really wanted to call out is it's really important to have a reset button toggled or really set period but also like something that is accessible i know my reset button is on my wheel so there will be times where it's rotating and i'm a little bit nervous and and i try to just get out of the way you know when possible i think that's a good uh rule of thumb though like just trying to stay if i'm going to spin how can i just get off the track just like you would irl right like how do i get off the track so i'm not going to disrupt other people but you know big respect to people who can tell and feel that they're going to make a mistake just simply do a reset literally reset yourself right and then just get back right on track and you're not disrupting anyone i think it's a very unspoken about skill i guess sounds crazy to call a skill was that a honk <laughs> that's crazy it's like a skill that's very good to have that i think a lot of people will appreciate and respect uh you know you for sometimes you'll if you're driving with people that you know you know, we'll all try to help each other out to avoid you or someone else resetting. But I think, like I said, good rule of thumb. If you feel like you're going to spin, if you're kind of maybe with a couple new drivers, you're, you know, not sure, just reset. You know, there's, there's no trophy for staying on track and other people will get frustrated, but yeah, it's really, it's really fun. I know, I know I mentioned this in the last video too, but it's always really fun. Like just kind of sitting here watching it as you guys watch it you know i did do the editing but i try to keep it a little bit more rudimentary so i'm not looking at every frame i'm just kind of looking at key moments but here we really get to analyze and, and kind of see what's happening you can see me trying to stay on fresh's door i wasn't really finding a lot of good success i think about kind of getting into like a rhythm and, and flow no pun intended for the the, the track but like getting into that rhythm is really important and into that pocket so i felt like i couldn't get into there i gave it enough proximity to kind of reset myself within the train and then here we are pretty much back into it although a little bit big of proximity i don't think that that's terrible though now we're switching to lime rock now i don't know if it's just me but this track is so underrated i i feel like back in the day when i first drove it uh i had a lot of issues or i just felt like the track was too small or i'm not really sure how to describe that but it just wasn't really a fun track but the more i've driven it the more it just kind of flows like it it's just a really nice flow 40k that's in front of us very consistent driver the second i saw that he was in the lead I really try to work a little bit more on my transitions. I could definitely tell that edit though. My transition was going to be a little bit late, but here's here's another bigger train, I think. Yeah, it's a decent amount of people. We see two red arrows in the front and the back. That is probably the most sweaty I get. But maybe as we're we're driving, it is a little bit hard to say what lines and and you know what I'm looking for because really on a chase I'm just looking at, hey, what is this driver doing? What should I be anticipating and kind of mimicking? <clears throat> I'm not really thinking about, okay, well, his lines look like this, or sorry, my line should look like this. I, I'm really just trying to focus on what they're doing and being smooth and consistent, especially for the people behind me. And here, uh, I don't know what, what snapped in this man, but Yasko had some really 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 nice leads which actually helped me uh with my chases so i was really working on 
transition timing and, and proximity. You can see there's a couple moments like this. I'm losing a little bit of prox, but trying to uh, recover it back without being too aggressive. You're just trying to keep that consistent prox as far as much as I can. And then also anticipating those transitions too. This corner is pretty difficult. Um, I typically find if you go wide outside, kind of cut it a little bit in as that uh, circle comes out, you can typically have a, a pretty good time staying smooth and consistent. But here we find ourselves back. This was actually the beginning of Saturday. We're now on rhythm and flow. Really, I said this last time, but genuinely such a fun map. Really good for warming up. Pretty lofty. Now, I said I wouldn't have many, if any, leads. This is actually the one time uh, that I'm going to actually only have leads on this map. But, I mean, look at that. Look at that snake. Look at that train. <laughs> Maybe a snake is not a good thing to call it. But, like, that train was crazy to watch back. It, it is always interesting, too. Like, when you're in a lead, you, you really don't get to see these views. You can see there, I, I had, I think, a little bit of a weird angle which caused uh the person behind me to make a mistake but he quickly recovered it and the train looks like it was uh pretty good here since we are on a lead though i will say look for that outside left side zone transition as kind of far out as you can i i have found that i typically go a little bit too shallow here so when i get the chance especially in a lead position i've been working on a little bit more uh angle and outside zones when i can and right here not going super wide, just really trying to uh, maintain that forward momentum. So I know, again, some people might say, hey, man, that's a little bit shallow there, but I have found that that section when you're on the uphill, it's really easy to, uh, to lose a lot of your speed. Yeah, the train's doing pretty well. A couple little issues, but yeah. And then this part too, sticking a little bit towards that inside zone, go on the outside zone for the tire, set you up good for the left side outside of the entry, and then uh, you can kind of run that out, so. I feel like maybe maybe next time we're on that track, uh, if I do a lead, if you guys are interested, maybe I can do a little bit more of a, a thoughtful uh, analysis of that too. But we find ourselves back onto UK streets yet again. I'm pretty sure the last recap had this twice. So I, I did, I, I hope I'm not saying the wrong thing here, but I believe I only have two runs, both in chase positions. And this, this track is one of the more interesting tracks I've noticed with a lot of these, maybe like free roam style tracks. There are general lines on the ground, as you can see outside of the skid marks that we're leaving. But with these more free roam tracks, oh my goodness, I cannot believe I left that in there. But with these free roam tracks, it's hard to know what lines are going to take. And also just for that point, because I, I feel like I left that in there for a reason. I think that's an example of, can I recover this? If I can recover this, I'm going to try to keep it up. And I didn't see any threat or any issue for anyone behind me by, by trying to do that. And, and I know like I've seen people do it. I would say like if you can if you feel like it's recoverable without making too much of a disruption behind you definitely go for it but you know be ready to be on that reset pretty quick wow that proximity gap is extreme right there yeah it looks like really watching this back right now so I was curious why I was really struggling on the proximity you can see most of these transitions I'm a little bit late on and this track being so wide and sweepy is really just a genuine fast track so once you start losing the proximity it's easy to just really get lost right yeah oh like really it's it's very obvious watching this back with you guys these transition timings are just way too late yeah right there like look at how late that is Again, really, we, we've talked about it before, but, you know, as they're transitioning, basically in the middle of their transition, they're straight. You want to have your car in that transition straight state as well. Basically, like you'll be bumper to bumper. If you watch a lot of the FD drivers, uh, they actually have that transition way more aggressive than, than we are. But 
maybe that'd be something cool to watch to kind of see what I'm talking about there. But I was excited to showcase this one. This is actually a map I haven't seen a lot of people drive on. This is Adam LZ secret spot. Now, this is another map that at first kind of similar to Sportsland Yamanashi. I felt like it was a little bit too narrow, but I found the more that I really think about those lines and make the track work for me rather than just taking whatever it kind of opens up in a weird way in a very weird way you can see i think the four of us are actually doing pretty decent here i try to go a little bit shallow typically i'm not sure if that's great this part is always interesting try not to be too much on the left foot but really trying to extend this really long uh corner if you could call it that even and then here, I think it really depends on how the, the lead takes it. Sometimes I've seen people just throw it in. Other times I've seen a little bit of a slower transition. That part right there that we just watched, I'm still really not sure of like, you know, again, like I haven't seen this in its entirety, you know, normal speed, not just scrubbing through the video to, to do a couple cool edits for you guys. But yeah, I've been thinking about it a lot, like how, how to approach it hopefully and i think it would be cool man like especially as we continue to do this series like have kind of those reflections of like yeah like this is how we were taking the line before this is what i've learned after driving a little bit more and i believe the last recap we did i also talked about like if you're having issues with the track or if you are really with the track but let's just say you're not really understanding the lines very well it's always cool to just follow someone else and see and even if like obviously if they are consistent i think that's the most ideal situation but in the case of where like maybe they're not consistent or maybe they're throwing like lines that look crazy just really following those lines and trying to emulate them kind of teach you a lot about oh okay that's why they're doing that or oh yeah okay yeah definitely <laughs> that's not the right line like it can go either way and on and honestly like there's been times where I felt like I've had a pretty good line and then I follow someone else and then I'm like, oh, actually, there's a better way to take this. And especially with that entry right there. So right before that transition, that longer straight, I'm not sure if it was intentional, but I believe the dirt doesn't have much slipperiness. So you can end up putting yourself a little bit more outside than maybe you would assume you can without really much consequence. So... I believe like Adam LZ has a video of this track. It's kind of crazy now that I think about it. I don't think I've seen that. Maybe I should watch that and see how they're taking it. It does seem a lot smaller. I'm not sure. I've seen a couple previews. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Uh, but here we are back at Clutch Kickers again. It always seems like there's maps that we end up uh, being on multiple times. But, uh, you know, again, this was like Friday or sorry, this was Saturday before it was Friday. But here we're following Foul, OTM Reg, and R. I've driven with R a decent amount. I wouldn't say enough to be uh, super consistent. I think here after our Friday clutch cook, cl wow, excuse me, clutch kicker session, uh, I was trying to think a lot more about this proximity too. And also just like a just a note while I'm thinking about it, you know, if you if you feel like you're bad at chases or you're like dude i'm just garbage when it comes to chases i just want to remind you that it really to have a good chase you have to have a good lead and sometimes that doesn't happen it's a, you know especially in public lobbies so definitely recommend you guys like joining in on the server and you know helping me get better and helping other people and even hopefully learning from other people but we are now back at shinjuku cart night this was another one from last weekend it does seem like this is starting to grow on people man uh myself included like once you stop getting nervous about the pillars typically you can run pretty good lines i will say though like they are still kind of nerve-wracking at at points but or like where you feel like you're a little bit too overconfident and then the the pillars slap you around and remind you hey man we're still here dude you just you just forgot about us but yeah this was a pretty good clip i thought it was cool to just kind of showcase a little bit more of a full train and like I, again you know i was reflecting on a little bit in the future i think it will be cool to look at 
once people get a little bit more familiar with the track and comfortable because it, it is a more technical track i think if not just a more uh intimidating track to look back and see like oh man like we thought we were getting trains on this track man and then you know fast forward we're like actually welded doors or something crazy like that you know I, ho I hope that ages well. <laughs> I hope that happens, man. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah, that's going to be awkward. We'll just pretend uh, I didn't say that. But uh, we, I think that was a transition unless I'm totally spacing it. Seems like it's the same run, though. But I did want to showcase a little bit more. I thought there was a couple cool moments in both the last clip and then uh, this clip. Maybe it is the same run. I'm not sure, but... You can see uh, whoever's behind me putting in a lot of work. I mean, they're literally right in my door. I'm really struggling on this proximity, though. And again, like, not to not to keep saying the same thing, but you know, if you notice, most of the time that I'm losing all this proximity has genuinely been because I'm way too late on these transitions or slow. I think typically it's just late overall. But every time I'm late, you can immediately see a gap build, like right there. You know, this is luckily like a very tight corner. I I would not recommend that action that I just took. I think that's really poor. There's got to be like a word, like a train trainsmanship or something. But uh, being a bad train member, just like cutting in like that. That's literally what I say not to do. And, and here I am doing it. But I was really trying to cut in a lot of that proximity gap because I as I'm talking and, and as I was driving, I could obviously tell that that was happening, but I don't think I made the right decision there. But luckily some pretty good drivers behind me was able to absorb that mistake. And then I think I am a little bit surprised I have three runs in here, but I want to say that this run was a little bit closer on the proximity after this initial corner. Yeah, I think we're a little bit closer. I mean, I feel like Mods is starting to become a household name very quickly. We see him almost in every video. I can't help it either, guys. Like, I genuinely do try to drift with, like, everyone. I don't try to have favorites. He just pops up a lot of time, a lot of the time. Uh, but I do feel like I have pretty good synergy with him, so it's always really fun. And, and he's actually, I think, driven this track a decent amount of time, so it's good for me to kind of learn from someone who knows that track. There, I made a, a little bit of a, a weird mistake. You kind of saw the car bob a little bit, including my wheel. So the train reminded me that I was making a mistake there. But yeah, here, finally keeping that proximity a little bit better. As I mentioned before, right here, trying to stay on the outside, not cutting in too much. I think at the top, it is a little bit of a natural cut there to maintain that momentum. But I think the train handled that pretty well, too. Yeah, you can see, I think right there, like that type of transition, if you look at it, even maybe replay it on the uh, the first person cam and the track cam, it's, it's hard to really explain. I'll try to call it out next time I see it, but there's this certain transition type that I've noticed and felt. And when I hit it really well, it's it's always very obvious. Here's one thing I just, I know this is like a lull in this video, but man, I'm, I know I'm glazing on Lime Rock, but I just wanted to pause it. I mean, it's not pause, but like, it was so cool, man. Like we were actually, I think at, if not a, like plus or minus one or two, 30 drivers on Lime Rock. And like, it was so cool to just sit here, you know, people lining up in front of me. You have like all these trains going on, all these drivers, like this is what like a hot lap grassroots track feels like man like i don't know i feel like i'm starting to have a huge soft spot for lime rock but i just wanted to showcase it because it it was really cool man i just, like genuinely shout out to everyone that's been part of the streams part of the server like we would not have these crazy uh lobbies if it were not for you guys so definitely shout out to you guys but here we are now following reg and r now it is unconfirmed or maybe i should say unverified but sources have told me that ocm reg actually holds one of the high 
I think it is the highest score, if not one of the top 10. I almost feel like that's a, a disservice. I actually might be like top five or top three, but uh, he holds the highest score on the ACS Lime Rock Drift. I think it's like a drift score or something. I've only been on those servers a couple of times, but so shout out to him. And the second I heard that, I was like, okay, I got to follow this guy's lines for sure. But you're trying to stay consistent not be too aggressive maintain my proximity i don't think i've driven with r on this track before but really like you can see on the the track cam just the amount of people behind me i'm really trying to work on staying uh as smooth as possible there are a couple times though watching it that i think i'm holding the drift a little bit too long but yeah overall it's it's, it's honestly not bad it's not bad and I guess I'm thinking, like, would I be happy of seeing someone like that in a train? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. But here it looks like it's me and old mods again. Man, we should just change the title to uh, Drifting with OTM Mods at this point. But yeah, really consistent. Again, because I've driven with him, I guess, as you can see, quite, quite a bit. I don't think I've driven with him a ton on this track, but it can be a little bit more aggressive with these transitions that line right there that he took is really good like that's what i would recommend a lot of people on lime rock lime rock to take i've seen a lot of different lines that kind of create a little bit of bunching but that line is is really good speaking of only drifting with mods i mean this isn't scripted but uh we are on ebisu north course and uh i had actually a little bit of a hard time finding clips i thought were worth it this is a little bit bigger of a scattered map so it's hard to really have people together unless you're all starting at the same time and then also you know the weird track cam because of the uh the distance but i did want to try to highlight a couple things here we're just trying to hold proximity I, this is still a track i don't have a ton of experience at but uh definitely trying to learn but anytime i guess really i see mods in front of me um, I'm always trying to just be a little bit more focused on my proximity and transition timing because I know if I make a mistake, if I tap him, especially with him being in the lead, uh, as long as it's not too bad, it's not going to cause too many problems. But I think here it's a little bit bigger of a group. Now, I notice like I am really transitioning early or maybe really entering early there. It feels really good in my car but i i'm not sure if that's the right thing maybe uh if you're watching this video maybe give me your thoughts on what the right ebisu line is I, I honestly i don't i don't really know it seems like every time uh, i drive oh yeah there i go and bog every time i drive with other people uh everyone has a different line so it's kind of hard but it's, it's good to learn trying to adapt to, to how people are going so f mods again dude Oh man, that's pretty, pretty bad. But F mods again, doing a great, great lead. I'm just trying to emulate it. Now it's interesting here. You see, he took an outside line this time. I was expecting more of an inside line as we saw with the last clip, but I think we kind of re reconnected with him without making too much of an issue for those behind us too. I mean, it's crazy too. Like there's a lot of people doing really well in this proximity. I feel like the uphill and the initiation and then even the transition on the straight are all kind of working against you to uh, not be able to stay with other people. But now it looks like finally, this was a clip I found where there was quite a bit of people in front of me. I thought it'd be cool to see. Unfortunately, a little bit of uh, the cars disappearing and reappearing, but here like really good job to those in front and even those behind with really capturing the right lines there too yeah i definitely would like to maybe practice that track a little bit more now this is a track that is probably new to a lot of you uh watching this is ld2f english town so when we hear english town i think a lot of people look at the vdc or think of the vdc map uh this is the actual irl english town uh, track if I understand that correctly but this is crazy right here so first off there's a weird audio glitch yeah you can probably hear it a little bit 
So you want to try to like basically road course it right here, transition right at the beginning of that little like outside track zone and then kind of run the outside or, you know, depending on who you're drifting with. I think I was running my own line instead of running his kind of running that line out. And then I've seen people take this either all the way outside to our left there or I think more often than not this right hand one. There is a big bump. Uh, if you go the right-hand side, so I think where you transition, you want to stay more on the right-hand side of the right-hand track. It's a lot of saying right-hand a couple times, but... But yeah, here, like, this, I think this is pretty much, we'll see how he takes it, but this is pretty much how I take it here. Yeah, so go a little bit outside here. This actually opens up, you'll see kind of right there, the track actually opens up a little bit wider. I, I had the mistake of going a little bit shallow. I would still argue I am going a little shallow still but trying to keep proximity with mods as best as i can without disrupting and then here you want to aim for that hill right there literally right where i was you can either pull the e-brake or maybe transition and then either slow down with the clutch nodding or rather not pressed in or e-brake i think i typically end up e-braking just feels the best but here again trying to match his entry I don't think I did a great job of it, but yeah, this track is very interesting and challenging, but it's a really fun track. I definitely say try it out. There's a lot of like little divots or bumps that kind of help that immersion slash realism. So we find ourselves back at Villain Sportsland. Again, as I mentioned, a, a little bit of a favorite of mine. Now, I think I'm a little bit too late to comment, but I don't know if you noticed, I had made a mistake or I think the person behind me had made a mistake, which then created another mistake for for people or for, uh, I guess, people behind him, but they recovered actually really well. I, I would definitely recommend like with this weekend recap, take a look at the track camera and kind of watch uh, how the different drivers are, are interacting with. I think there's actually a couple moments that I hadn't commented on because they just kind of happened quick. I wasn't like, again, this is not a, this is not a scripted video. This is just me doing some edits and then, uh, we watch it together kind of deal. So yeah, definitely recommend watching that and, and maybe they'll help you learn. Uh, you can see like right there. I mean, the person behind me and the person behind them and the person behind them, honestly, all super late on the transition, but looks like they recovered actually pretty nice here too. Like I, I do think I should have been closer with that with that entry but this is someone that i haven't really dr driven with and it does seem like i've seen people throw massive backies into that that entry or take it a little bit more conservative and shallow so it's always hard to tell you know but for our final map we are on takamaki i think it's Col colva 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 uh, I, I don't think i'm getting closer this is a another fun track I want to say, yeah, it was on our last one. I was struggling with it. And it's funny, like after that video too, I kept thinking about it. I'm like, man, I gotta, gotta remember how to drive this track and actually not be super garbage. So you're in a chase position, really trying to hold that proximity, trying to really like see what lines are going to pick. I don't think either of the drivers in front of me, I have a ton of driving time with, so. Again, leaving a little bit of a pocket just to see as I go like almost door to door, but like that moment too, I could have slammed on my brakes for sure, but the better option is a little bit of contact with the driver in front of me and then uh, keeping the train behind me smooth. It's kind of a hard line. I, I'm j I was just thinking, I guess I paused a little bit long. I was just thinking, is that normal? Would you ever do that IRL? I mean, maybe. A little rusty, man. It's been a couple of years, but this is definitely a fun track if if you haven't driven it before. I think a lot of people have. It seems like a lot of people from Australia, but I think this is Australian track, so I guess that makes sense, right? But yeah, I, d I definitely left this section a little bit long, just kind of like a more continuous version sometimes there's a lot of edits in there just to kind of maintain speed but i thought it'd just be nice to just watch 
basically what a what an actual like little hot lap session looks like i think this is a little bit condensed though but just so you can, guys can see it there's a couple mistakes that i'm making trying to recover and also one note i just wanted to mention i have tried to fix my fov now if you if you're still here and maybe you've noticed hopefully it doesn't look as bad as it was but i still think that there's probably a little bit of improvement that uh i could do i think i was roughly around 85 degrees fov and now i think i'm on 80 and i scooted up a little bit on the seat which actually i should also mention i think has helped me a little bit with being more confident in uh matching transitions and not feeling like i'm about to smack the back of someone's bumper so i think next or rather this coming weekend maybe i'll mess with the fov a little bit more i'm just trying to find that sweet spot i think before i had it a little bit closer but there was a little bit of feedback that i got to uh increase it so but yeah man i really appreciate you guys watching we're kind of getting towards the end i mean this is the i think this is the last lap or so if you guys have any feedback for the series definitely let me know i did try to work a little bit harder on finding cool moments uh but also we were a little bit late this week just because of memorial day definitely threw a wrench into things but if you enjoyed the video definitely leave a like uh leave a comment too man like i'd love to see you guys in there I really want to continue to, to make this series. I, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I watched the last video back. I thought it was really fun just to to watch. And actually, for the first time, wasn't cringy watching my own video <laughs> back. But anyways, boys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you uh, this weekend or in the next video, man. Until then, peace.